Hello everybody, it's Leah from Toon Runes here, and today I am joined by... Hey guys, Pie Guy Rules here. And, uh, the Wacky Deli. And we just got back from the New York Comic Con Steven Universe panel, so we just kind of wanted to go over some of what was happening at the panel and just our general thoughts on it. So... Um, if you guys weren't following along, I was live tweeting the panel. So one of the first things that we got news wise is that on Tuesday, November 12th, we're getting the Steven Universe DVD and it has a lot of never before seen content on it. And they didn't necessarily say what that was, but I'm assuming storyboards or storyboards of footage that got cut from the movie because there's generally things like that when it comes to so that's going to be interesting to see what comes out with that. Um, and that was just like a little tiny bit of news. It wasn't anything noteworthy, obviously. Um, and then Rebecca was also talking about her biggest challenges for the movie. And she said that musically, it was making sure that the music itself was telling a story and informing the movie. And she was saying that that was like her biggest issue when it came to directing the movie because she's the one who directed everything. Um, and she said it was also really tough to get the right person for Spinell. So yeah, they, uh, Rebecca and the voice actresses answered a lot of questions, um, like a good amount of questions, and there were some interesting ones. I, I don't actually even remember what prompted this, if this was a question, but basically, I think someone asked, uh, Sarah how she got involved with the project, um, of the Steven Universe movie, and basically, <laughs> she said that, like, how it was pitched to her when she was about to audition was just that the character was psychotic Betty Boop and then Rebecca Sugar was very quick to jump in and be like, I did not write that. There was a very long description about how she she's was a like very complex pages. character. Yeah. Um, so, um, but basically Sarah said that, you know, she was, she, she initially went in thinking maybe it wasn't such a big part and then realized that Oh, I'm like the most important character, and then <laughs> whoops, didn't know I'd be coming back to this after a day. Like <laughs> yeah, um, but she's she talked about how much she loves like the fan base. She didn't know anything about the show beforehand, and I don't, she yeah, she probably just... hasn't watched it. But <laughs> she's yeah. she um you know she was very appreciative and very very happy to be there, yeah. happy to stay. She's very grateful to be a part of the fandom, and clearly the fandom has a lot of love and respect for her, and. I mean, after a performance, you know, how could you not? Yeah, and that was another thing too, when all of the people, all the crew were coming out on stage, they came out at their respective parts for when the music yeah. was coming on, so they would come in and then start singing their song from Here We Are in the Future. Mm -hmm. Um, they had like a full band. Too. Yeah, they had a full like a band. Full band. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't some guy with a guitar. Yeah. It was like a yeah. guitarist, a, tr a trombone player. And Estelle took the time to like give all of them a little solo and just let yeah. them get their spotlight in. And that was that was peak wholesomeness. Uh, and of course, Rebecca sang the part for Steven because uh, Zach's Zach is off traveling on. the world. Yeah. Yeah, so he's taking a break and he wasn't there, which is good for him. He needed a break. Yeah. But that was seamless. Like the yeah. fact that Rebecca sung it instead yeah. of like, you know, here's. Billy. Yeah, here, yeah, here's Billy yeah. the intern. He really worked hard for this. We got yeah. we got Jace Norman in here to sing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, Sarah Styles. We didn't know that she was coming in. Um, yeah. She was not listed as one of the people on the panel. So because she's not in the song that they all came in on, basically we're like, oh, by the way, we have one more guest. And then she came in and immediately started performing other friends right which was really really nice to see yeah. performed live because she was really into it like you have to keep in mind that most of the voice cast are broadway singers so yeah. they're used to acting while they're singing yeah. so she was really getting into it i mean i'm sure that cartoon network will eventually upload mm -hmm. um they usually do a few days later so you'll be able to see but she was like all over the stage and dancing around and like stomping her feet it Twi was yeah. twirling yeah, it and was really yeah. great and performative it, you know even just in her facial expressions yeah. you could see every single little like beat for beat uh Emotion. expression yep. and vocal change it was just like in, you know i was back on broadway it was wonderful it really was um and like the thing is too is we weren't like super close to the front of the stage, but because they had the cameras and everything, we could see the facial expressions really close up. So like you were saying, it was really nice to just see. She was like how yeah. how into the their parts 
she everyone was is stomping. Yeah, she was. She was going she was, ham. Like she, she was ham. She performed um, "Drift Away" too. Yeah. Right. And when she was performing that, like I don't know about you guys, but I was getting super emotional over it. Like I videotaped it and I was like sniffling in the video a little bit. I'm like, I'm not posting this one because people don't want to hear me crying. I had chills. Yeah, I did too. Cause like it's different when you're watching it. I mean, and I'm not saying that the cartoon wasn't properly portraying what was going on. I think it's just a bit more different when there's somebody like in front of you well it's a cartoon i yeah. mean you're, you know you're seeing her do exaggerated fight scenes which is very much entertaining but when it's a person performing it in front of you it's it's a person performing yeah. you know um <clears throat> and and the whole the whole production of it yeah between having the full band the the cameras were great about capturing it and getting the stuff on the screens to the yep. side um, and even down to, they didn't have like a, a host ask, you know, like mediate the questions no. or whatever. It was, um, it was, uh, Michaela, Michaela, yeah. Michaela Dietz, the voice of Amethyst, who, she did a great yeah, job. She, she was, did. she was very enthusiastic, very into it. And, um, Estelle helped a lot, I think, yeah. with it too, but you, mostly with the music parts, Estelle right. was helping. And right. then Michaela did yeah. like the moderation with the mm -hmm. questions and everything. A slight side note. Did you notice that? During other friends, I think um, all the other while Sarah was like doing her thing, all the other gems were like switching legs. Like, oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, no. like they were just jamming along, you know, just silently, <laughs> just flipping their legs. You know, I'm paying attention. You're doing great, girl. Yeah, you could tell they were really in sync with each other. Yeah. Up there. And you could tell that they were really enjoying themselves, especially Dee Dee. Dee Dee gets so into everything. <laughs> yes. Like, she, even with her part, she's just like, she was so ready. She is Pearl. I love her. She's literally Pearl. And, like, it's very much true. Like, they were even saying at the panel how Rebecca writes the characters to be, like, the voice actors. And they she writes their struggles based on real-life struggles that are going on <laughs> with their lives. Like, she, somebody asked, for instance, why Steven has a jacket. And she said it was because Zach Callison, which is Steven's voice actor, always has like mm. these really elaborate jackets that he brings in it's when very he very fashion forward yeah said. <laughs> well there was also something about how one time he wore uh what, it was a it was, it was a, woman's a woman's bathrobe, bathrobe. A basically woman's bathrobe, and they were like where'd you get that duster and it's like it's a woman's bathrobe <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a duster yeah which i thought like it zach would like, oh, this would make a really he nice would. jacket. He, he does have really nice jackets. He does, so. he does have really I, nice like, jackets. Like, I imagine him one day just sporting the jean jacket from We Bear Bears. Oh, yeah. And, like, no. just fully rocking it. I can see it. that. And then everybody's just like, yeah, Zach always comes in with, like, yeah. the best jackets. And he's like, I don't know, this isn't my best jacket, guys. And they're like, well, then what is your best jacket? <laughs> um, but that that's just really cute, like, how the characters reflect. And then um, Rebecca was also talking how they had a very difficult time with that but then Sarah Styles was also saying when she was auditioning like she had known nothing really about it and her audition song was Drift Away which makes sense because that is the most important song that she would have had to have sung um, so she was talking about how she didn't know anything about this character she didn't know anything about the show and she said she was sitting there like crying on her bed after mm. like after she was after she sung the song because it had touched her yeah. just like so deeply and she was like she had to like go back another time to record it because the first time she did it she like couldn't get through it without breaking down it was really an impactful moment for her yeah and then she sent it to her agent and she's just like i feel like this is gonna be like a really long job um, but that was, that was interesting. It's always nice to see, um, how new crew members react to, to joining into the crew. Um, and then there was a very interesting question that somebody asked, uh, at the Q and A, somebody said, did the other diamonds have their own spinels? So, and, uh, yeah. And Rebecca said, she said something along the lines of like she doesn't she doesn't think that the other diamonds would, would have, have that one. need. Exactly. She would they wouldn't have the need for yeah. that. Um but, but she'd like to imagine if they did it would be uh, a, a club, club and a spade. spade. Which I mean may, who maybe that means that there are other like not spinels but like some other very specialized gem that caters to whatever they need in that moment like other gems of that rank but I think it means like pink needed a playmate because she was lonely so that's why it's like 
yellow and blue wouldn't need a playmate because they're right. very serious gems. I mean, unless, like, when they were younger they weren't, but I have a feeling that pink is the only one that was very childlike out of all of them. So it's just, like, they wouldn't have those needs because they weren't ever childlike, whereas pink needs a lot of attention that they couldn't provide her with. So that's why they wouldn't need their spinels. But, yeah, it was it was interesting, and Rebecca was also intrigued because she's like, you know what? I would like if they were a cub <laughs> in a spade, but they wouldn't have one. I will, I will note, basically everything, every single thing out of Rebecca Sugar's mouth seemed very, like she, even, even when there were weird curveball questions, it seemed like she like took a second to think and then had just a really, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to say like clear because a lot of times it's like sidestepping around answering the questions yeah. she can't answer, but, but she still gives a little bit of information or at least a little like speculative, like well, if we were to do something like this, I'd like to think we'd do it this way. Like, yeah. she's just right. very well-spoken. She yeah. is. I was, um, I actually got into, like, the signing yesterday, and, like, just based off of the short time I was around her, she seemed like the kind of person you could sit down with for hours and just go over right. little tidbits of lore and stuff. So there's <laughs> definitely a lot more up there going on than she could ever give in, like, an hour. Um, yeah. Or even in the span of the show's yeah. lifetime, which is... 162 of... episodes yeah. and counting. So. Um, and then there was also another very interesting thing that happened. Somebody went up for the Q&A and asked if there was a Broadway adaptation of Steven Universe, the movie. In the works. What would you want to see yeah. in it? And then all of them just went, like, silent. And they're just looking <laughs> they're around like, at each other, like... And would, Rebecca's like, I would, don't think I can say anything about that right like, now. would you guys want one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, Rebecca's like, would you guys be interested in something like that? And then she what? said, but, and I can't say anything else on it. No. So usually whenever somebody says that, it means there's yeah. something related to that in yeah. the yeah. works. Ah. Uh. In the works, or possibly. Yeah, or possibly. Just in I, I think I think you know, I, ideas are always open. I would say because I mean, it, look, if they must if, have been discussing something. Yeah. If SpongeBob can have a musical, of if course. Spider-Man can have a musical, like really and anything like, can. The thing is, too, is like it's set up to be a musical. Oh, oh yeah. Literally, all of them are Broadway singers. Yeah. Almost everybody is a Broadway singer on that. You show. could even just do like a regional adaptation of the movie for the stage and have it be like. On, on, you know, fit on stage, like, it would work. Right. Feasibly, so, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'd go on tour, maybe that'd be, like, the last thing that they ever do for the show. I think that would be a nice way to wrap it up. Yeah. Just because it's bringing, it's it's basically a music-centered show with, like, emotions, so it it would make sense for for everything to go out that way, like, if they went on tour and then that's the last thing that they do. (laughs) Yeah, like, Um, because for Spongebob, you know, they pretty much worked from the ground up to do all the conceptual design for right. Steven Universe, it's all laid out. You don't need to do much to adapt it. No, you really don't. So, it, it seems like a slam dunk to And me. they would I probably would... need to change some things, too. Yeah. Or maybe they would make You'd have to simplify thing. it. You'd have you, to simplify yeah. it Like, really, um... Yeah, I mean, yeah. for all we know, maybe that's a bonus feature. Maybe they do, like, a low-budget acting out of it with the... I, who knows? Oh, um, yeah, like, hi! <laughs> yeah. Like, a Steven Universe recap in the style of Tim and Eric. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, yeah, um, that was just something that was very interesting because I feel like they weren't even planning it hinting that very soon, but it just happened to come up, and then they're all like, oh, no. Um, so that was that was very, very interesting. Um, there was a question someone asked about crying. How many? Well, it, it was was it how many times how many did Rebecca times Sugar make Sugar you cry? Made you cry? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Dee Dee's response was, "How many episodes are there?" <laughs> and then Rebecca just like had the number. Yeah, she's yep. like 162 times. Like yep. she and she said it very very quietly, and it was really funny. Yeah. Um, and then everybody was going through, and then uh, Dee Dee said that she specifically gets the most emotional on Stephen and Pearl episodes, and also episodes relating to the kindergarten. Mm-hmm. So like amethyst based episodes, basically. She said that those are the ones that get her the most emotional. Um, I know that. The other person, like Sarah Styles, was just like, "Yeah, I hadn't even met Rebecca yet, and she made me cry." Like, so I, yeah. and everybody, it just felt like the how who who here has been who, who here, here has hasn't Rebecca been made yeah like by Rebecca <laughs> raise your hand raise your hand and like nobody <laughs> okay yeah so it was basically like that that SpongeBob means like who who here <laughs> well we need we need like a, a tally on 
who who has Pink Diamond made cry versus who has Rebecca Sugar made cry? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's probably <laughs> a circular Venn diagram, but very still. Very interesting, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then the other thing was Estelle just out of nowhere, because she's very quiet during all the panels usually, and sometimes she'll chime in, and she's really funny whenever she does. Yes. But in response to that, she said, get out of my life, don't make me feel things. To which, <laughs> which... song did she say that? Um, I can't remember the one that which one. There's one from the movie. Yeah. yeah. I, it must have, it was probably... I think it was, I feel like it was Drift Away, but... Yeah, it, was it was either Drift, drift away. away or True Kind of Love. I can't remember. I don't think it was, I think it was, it was Drift, drift away. away, yeah. 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 But um, they're very funny because you could tell they just have a very close buddy-buddy relationship with each other. They. Someone asked a question about uh, the ending theme to the show, Love Like You. Um, or how, I, don't, I don't even... Wait, I, I don't even it was, remember It how... wasn't related to it initially, but we got on that topic because Rebecca outlined her inspiration. Oh, right. I remember what it was. Yeah, so what happened was, one of the questions was, what is your favorite song out of the entire show? Mm -hmm. And Dee Dee said that her favorite song is Love Like You. And then they went off on like how it was all their other favorite songs too. And Rebecca was just like, yeah, she's like, there was a really... There was a really weird story to Love Like You because she's like, originally, I was writing it to show aliens trying to learn like learn to love like humans. So it was originally just the gems as like a species. But she said then she was getting really frustrated writing the song and she couldn't figure out how to finish it. So it started getting like really self-deprecating because she was frustrated with writing it, which is kind of like an interesting thing if you think about it because there is that, that part in there that right. gets pretty dark. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she was just saying that it ended up being a song that was about not caring about yourself and then because you're not caring or loving about yourself, you have a hard time loving and caring about others. And she said that she didn't realize that that's what the message of the song was until she had finished writing it, which I think was very interesting. Well, yeah, because Love Like You has always been this enigma um, in the sense that at certain points it sounds like it's like, like Rose singing to Steven or Rose singing to Greg or like how, how the gem singing to Steven, how you can interpret it any way you want. And it's, it seemed to be this thing that is almost beyond, like you can't attribute it to one specific thing. Right, yeah. And I'm glad that she didn't she like clarified. sit and, exp mm -hmm. she didn't sit and explain like, you know, here's what each line means, but she, she talked about her writing process um, in a way that you're still open to interpret however you want, but she could, she did kind of clarify her intent on it. Right. Um, yeah. There was, like, um, a segment where she talked about her, like, kind of direct inspiration for it, which was, like, a story about her finding, like, a plush of, like, a, a bunny with its belly being faded out over time. Yeah, which we've all heard. It's, it's basically one of her biggest inspirations, yeah. I think. Yeah, and it's, she was like, it's the first time I learned about things changing without me, like, altering it, and I go back to write about it over and over again. And I mean, she, yeah, she, I mean, she was upfront about it. She's like, yeah, I keep yeah. writing about I this write rabbit. Songs she name dropped it. Adventure Time, so yeah. I was happy. Yeah, and, and then it was someone <laughs> asked if the bunny had a name, and there is none. Yeah, she she just looked very she's disappointing. Just like, she goes, no, yeah. <laughs> no plot point for the bunny. I yeah. see you. You know, no plot point. It's gonna come back and haunt her. It's gonna come back. And she also talked about um, Steg's inspiration. It was one of the board artists for the show, basically entirely. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Know the name. I I can't remember Paul Vileko? Yeah, that I think that's who right. It was. Yeah. it was one of the, it was one of the male board artists, and um, yeah, basically she said that that was just kind of his. He storyboarded it, and she just loved everything about it. All and... I could think about when she was talking about him uh, was like he's just a big JoJo stan. Like, <laughs> well, she she really threw him under the bus if you don't she, like Stag because did. she was like, She's it's like, all him. Here's the guy. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Hmm. But um, she didn't do it like that. She did it in like a. I think this yeah. is amazing. Go credit him I because love he's this awesome. Guy. Right. Look at his art. Yeah. It's fit, it's great, guys. Um. And then another interesting question that was asked was somebody asked. Um. I can't remember how they worded it because it was really weird. But they asked if, um, why nobody knew what the gem reset tool was except for Bismuth, and Rebecca basically. They asked. Did they? Did they use the rejuvenator in the war, or, or yeah, maybe why something. didn't they? Yeah, or why something. didn't they? And, and Rebecca's said, oh, they definitely did. Yeah, she yeah. was like, yeah, well, they, they uh, did. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, because that that was what she said. She said they most certainly, like that's what that was her actual quote. She said they most certainly used it in the gem war. <laughs> I don't know how you lose a war when you have a weapon like that, but um... yeah, because um, <laughs> she was just like. 
the gems who could talk about the rejuvenator and who would know about it were poofed and rejuvenated. So, yeah. of course, they couldn't talk about it. She's like, that's why Bismuth knows, because she's a war veteran, so she would know what it was like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, I mean, that begs the question, how many, how many gems had been rejuvenated that were originally crystal gems and that had went back to homeworld after Mm. the war ended because uh, i think she did say something in passing about how they kept getting gems coming back to their side because they were rejuvenating them i can't remember what she said exactly but it was it was something about that i mean if there were more steven universe spoilers for the end of this video um (laughs) you know a device that like resets your characters to become like their base forms could be a convenient way to undo characters i i don't i hope they wouldn't do that but since they already did it already i mean and um that there was also somebody who asked what the gems would do for self-care which i thought was like an interesting question that somebody Mm -hmm. would ask um (laughs) amethyst uh Deets just said, like, she'd probably eat a lot, uh, make a mess, and then time how long it would take Pearl to clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> I love Destelle's answer. She'd just be like, meditate, stare sleep, into the future, stare into the void, and say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Estelle is like, always so nonchalant in her answers, yeah. and I love it. Uh, Deets was like laundry. Yeah, yeah, Deets. <laughs> Therapeutic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She got super defensive. Because <laughs> one of them was like, "Really? Do you really find that relaxing?" Yeah. And Michaela was just like, "Do you really find that relaxing?" She goes, "It's laundry. It smells good." Like she was so offended. It's like, is that um, how you really feel? I wonder. I do wonder if Pearl doing laundry in the movie had something to do with that. I mean, she does laundry like at multiple points in the series. That's true. And like the chores, the chores chart, she crosses everyone's name off and puts her name there. Yeah, that's just her de-stress way don't don't judge her she's a good bean um but that that was that one so that was an interesting question and then there was also another one somebody asked how like how she made the diamonds and how she made their personalities they asked that right at the end (laughs) yeah right at the end it was literally the last question that people got to and i think it was a spinel cosplayer who asked it too if i'm remembering but she said that they were all based off of like different um actions i guess different you... different aspects yeah, it's different... like it was like judgment um in action and thought thought something like that she, that those are the three that she mentioned i don't think mm-hmm. she i think she was referring specifically to white yellow and blue right. and the i don't think she gems. brought pink up mm-hmm. because pink is basically like why you don't need to bring <laughs> pink up okay so before I say this next thing, yeah. if you guys haven't heard, you can't freak out because everybody on Twitter was losing their minds over this. Right. Rebecca basically, she was just like, so I know you guys want news about Steven Universe Season 6. She's like, but there is no Steven Universe Season 6. And it was kind of weird being in the room when that happened. Well, um, first first they said that there was a special announcement. One more question and then a special announcement. Right. right? So it wasn't just like the end of the panel and Rebecca Sugar was like, no Season 6. It was like she didn't drop was, the mic and leave. There was one hundred percent something happening. Right. It could have been like Steven Universe movie two, I guess. But yeah. we knew there was something, and then Sugar was just like, "I know you guys are really excited. Um, there is no season six of Steven Universe." And you she could just like, like, hear the mm-hmm. silence. Like you could, the, everybody was so happy up until that point, and then you felt like <laughs> the depression like, set yeah. in. <laughs> like, there were some people behind us too that were like, <gasps> like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Could you imagine? It's if, setting in. If the panel had just ended there, that would have just been the saddest yeah. panel. I know. They people wouldn't have moved. Coming. People would no, have just People, would, they would, just people would just there start sobbing for I'd the whole be weekend one of them. Like, and yeah. just sit there and think. Like, what? They wouldn't <laughs> process it until Sunday night. Yeah, and, the, and then they just crying. Like, I wonder how many people have already like, are you really upset that the show... Okay, but then... So anyways, like... <laughs> Obviously, it led into something. I'm gonna say that before right. I go on to a whole other spiel. Spoilers! But spoilers, spoilers, guys. The so, future exists. Here essentially, we are in the Steven future. Universe itself is done. It ended with the movie. But there is a spin off series which they're calling the sequel. It's very spin off is a word, isn't it? Yeah, um, spin off is a it's word. It's not a word Rebecca word. Sugar used. No, they called but it, it's an the best way to explain it. Limited miniseries. Yes, yeah, so she said it's, it's a Universe, very clunky phrase. It is, but it is technically correct. Yes, yeah, so basically it's an epilogue miniseries, but like they didn't say like 
how long it was it was gonna be. Well, because yeah. all of Cartoon Network's miniseries up have, to this point, been like Long Live the Royals, Over the episodes. Garden Wall, Adventure Time, the, they were all I think exactly five. eight, somewhere between five and five eight. Five to eight. And and that and they're branded as a miniseries, and that's right, that. Yeah. Um, Infinity and Train. they're also all aired really concurrently, like yeah. within a few days of each other. And Infinity Train was like the only one as a reason to like break that mold because while it is like a mini series, it confirmed to have some kind of continuation to it. Yeah. So it's not really like you can consider that a limited mini series. But with this, there's no news about what the episode count's going to look like or how they're going to split that up. Right. I mean, essentially, it it just. It, it's such it's such a so insanely so... big because it could be like three episodes it could be 20 episodes right it could be it, it could be like like 30 it could episodes. Be five episodes like it could right. be like a season long thing because yeah. they, um i know there was a lot of misinformation going around because people obviously they're not at the panel so they don't know and right. to be fair we didn't have much information either. Right. They essentially yeah. showed us a teaser clip, and it said it's the the epilogue series is called Steven Universe Future. That's what the name. <laughs> which of is also it the is. most clear title of anything Steven ever. Universe I know. Future. Which which is gonna be weird because now when you're doing like Steven Universe Future is a term that people would look up to see like the time skip too. So it's kind of like weird, but anyway. So the that's what the series is called, and there's. <laughs> A lot of misinformation that oh my god the show's over or no it's season six it's not season six it is not yeah. um they made it blatantly clear and people were like oh maybe she just meant that there was it's not like no there's she, nothing she said, to interpret there's no season six so steven universe is over it ended at change your mind and it ended at steven universe the movie that was the last thing for where steven universe so steven universe future is something completely different it's a new series didn't um ian wasn't ian the one that basically tried to describe steven universe future as like think of it like as naruto shibuden yeah that's basically what yeah. he said it but is. that doesn't explain a lot i mean the thing <sighs> it's not it, it's not like fully clear but it does no it does explain some things. Yeah. Like, if you understand what It demystifies it, it a little if you think about it. And there's also many reasons why they they could go down this path. I mean, it could be as simple as, like, they can renegotiate contracts if it's a new series. You know what I mean? Right. Or if it's a limited series or whatever. Um, they can, you know, maybe distribute it in a different way or, or something. Right. There's behind-the-scenes reasons why this could be rebranded. Or it could just potentially be that... Rebecca Sugar just said, you know what? No, I feel like Change Your Mind is the ending of Steven Universe, but, you know, we want to keep the magic alive, so here's another right. story. Because yeah. there's so much that they still had to go over. Like, there's Jasper, there's the Corrupted Gems on Homeworld. Like, there's so much. Yeah. And the little snippet that they, they showed, there was a lot going yeah. on in. And supposedly that was the opening to the show, what they right. did show. Well, it's a, it's a take on the sh opening of Steven Universe. Right. And, and it was essentially like, we are the Crystal Gems is no longer a thing, which makes sense because it's no longer... Nothing to rebel it's against. It's no longer Steven Universe anymore. It's Steven Universe Future, which I'm trying to nail this point home because it's not the same show. Exactly. Um, yeah, sadly it's not the same show. But anyway, so they have a different <laughs> opening now, which is the basically we're in the future. That's yeah. what the opening song is now. They so that's kind of weird. It's a, it's a movie song but it's also the opening song now, too. Yeah. Um, the opening, I will say, was very nicely animated, but I you can definitely tell it's not from the same It was done studios. by an outside studio. It was... It was they, I would it, love to find out who animated. The Maybe light. it was James Baxter. Maybe yeah, the, James, <laughs> James Baxter. Alone. <laughs> James Baxter... By himself, yes. animated the yes. entire in a room for fourteen hours just a day, there like... <laughs> just drawing. Um, to go into the intro, um, it starts off with basically every gem character that's on our on Steven's side or whatever, um, up to that point. Right, like, basically. You know, only with the exception of maybe like Aquamarine, Topaz, and Jasper, like. Yeah, like, Jasper wasn't there. Well, our poor well, girl. Mm, but yeah, everyone's there from Lars's crew to like the, the Bismuth's friends that we only like briefly see and hear in passing, and it's like a Smash Bros. It's everyone's here. Basically, <laughs> all games all we here. make that joke yeah. all the time with the show, but this really is, and everyone is here. So. Right, right. Um, but they also showed like the quote unquote villains for right. the series. So Jasper was one of the ones, which is very interesting. Like. 
Uh, White Diamond was also one of the villains in this. There's also a weird Cactus Steven thing. There's two Lapises, an Aquamarine, it looks like, which is probably our Aquamarine. So... And then, a, like, a Beetle thing. Of note is that Aquamarine and Jasper are next to each other, in the sense... You know, if you want to claim that it's, like, the the unredeemed villains of the show or, like, the characters that still hate Steven by the end of the series um, could be teaming up. Like, I don't know. Uh, Cactus Steven definitely has something to do with Steven's weird healing powers. I yeah. think he's going to start kissing cactuses. And that's just, nature does not like that. That's well, I mean, like you also have to keep in mind, Steven went around the earth kissing it after <laughs> Spinell's thing. I, don't so, think he, I think it's just Beach City. I don't know if it went around the whole it's earth. It's canon. He did it around Steven the world. Steven made out with the earth. Well, we, we also brought up a funny point. It's the one cactus from cry, from a cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> that one yeah. weird cactus that Steven yeah. looked at one time. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of White Diamond, it, it looks like some sort of weird version of white diamond and then the lapises we don't know anything about but the 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 interesting thing is that every one of these characters has a glowing face um right even the even the beetle thing has eyes um they look like jack-o'-lanterns is what we were saying (laughs) right because they they kind of do jasper's 100 percent just a jack-o'-lantern there you can't convince me otherwise Uh, yeah um it's scary (laughs) spooky time it is spooky time right Uh, but that's i mean i don't know i guess do, would, do you guys think this is a team or this is like it's it's a roundup um, of all the villains I, I think, I think right. it's yeah I think it's a roundup of all the villains so I think maybe each episode from this will be focused around mm-hmm. each thing or maybe mm-hmm. there will be a few episodes for each villain so yeah. for example like a few episodes will be about Jasper either being redeemed or not being redeemed will be like maybe let's say two three episodes are mm-hmm. dedicated to her specifically right. and then like another two three episodes are dedicated to like Aquamarine and then so forth and mm-hmm. so on and I think the reason why White Diamond is on there is um, they need to give her some more character arc because as it is right now it's just kind of weird that she's just okay with everything so i feel like her episode would be taking place in the past um unless they are really leaning into the future thing and that's why it's steven universe future um but again like i feel like white diamond may be evil in the sense that steven's really trying to get her to get out of that whole you have to treat people equal thing yeah it's probably, like, pretty likely that Steven Universe Future is going to tackle all of these different villains that didn't really get, like, a, a send-up or whatever. But, I mean, what's what do you think the likelihood is, uh, is of the villains actually, like, teaming up at the very tail end and, like, making for a real finale? I think that would be cool, but I don't know if they're going to go that route. But it would be really, really neat if they mm-hmm. did. Um, I mean, it, from it looks like a nice mix of old characters that maybe didn't get the most resolution, and then also new new things like the we've never seen any other lapis. Um, then the, this cactus monster is like an entirely. And then there's also that beetle, which I think is the most interesting to me because mm-hmm. you think that all the corrupted gems were uncorrupted, so it can't. It either one, it's not a gem, even though it looks like it is a. Corrupted there are aliens gem. canonically or, in yeah, Steven Universe right, that aren't gems. Or it's another. Maybe they're on like another planet or something for some instance, and that's where they run into it. But then if it would have to be a sentient being, you would think. Well, what's interesting is that the beetle is. The, the centipede thing is just kind of like the focal point of the image in a way. It I is. mean, I mean, the cactus St- Stephen definitely stands out, but like you would think, if that is really White Diamond in some sort of villainous role, you would think that would be like the right. you know in the middle above everyone else. But instead, it's this. She might not be as much of a threat. So potentially, this thing could be the cause of these characters having glowing faces, and that'd be really cool. You know, like maybe that's the gem creator. Ooh, it's, that would be a really neat concept, mm, wouldn't it? Mm, and maybe really. that's why they have animal corrupted versions because their creators are animalistic. I mean, that's in, an interesting theory. To the to the credit of that, maybe they are on some sort of weird team. Um, the the other image that this reminds me of is the like the promo image we got from years ago Comic Con, where in the extended opening, right. where it's the one shot of uh, Yellow Diamond. Lapis, all the gems that we knew at that point, basically, that were kind of antagonists or held captive by antagonists. Um, it is a really nice shot, though. 
Yeah. Um, and it, it definitely brings up some things because I, I don't really, I couldn't really think where this series is going other than tying up loose ends. Because, I mean, they didn't explicitly say that this is the end of Steven Universe, but generally when you say epilogue implies <laughs> well, it is the if end. you're J.K. Rowling, you can write an epilogue and then like yeah. another series and a play and, and like a lot. Six seasons and a movie. Right. Yep. This will be the epilogue of Steven Universe, but then next we'll, we'll have get... a reboot in a few years called Steven Universe Forever, and <laughs> it's going to be directed by Denny Tartakovsky, and it's going to have six seasons and seven movies. Well, I feel like also if you title something like Future, pa you, you might get Steven Universe Past. No, Steven that Universe, would be awful. Days no, of Future be... Past. Days of... No, no, imagine this: Steven Universe <laughs> Past, and that's not that's before Steven. Is this like a pun? Like he died? Like Steven <laughs> yeah. Universe has passed? <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like. The... The, Here we are see, in like, the, the future, gem and, he's <laughs> and he's dead. dead. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, other exciting things about it being a new series is that there is the possibility, maybe, that it could not be from Steven's perspective. Just maybe. <laughs> but his name's in the title, and everyone's singing it, which is very awkward. <laughs> the re I mean, like the rest of the intro. Um, it's it's like a it's kind of a recreation of the original intro, Basically, but with like but just with a lot of characters. Well, what's yeah. nice is that all of the characters get the spotlight in the in the very opening shot, but then afterwards we get the we get the right. Bismuth lapis. So they keep lapis. it traditional, but then they go out. Of mm -hmm. that. So if you ever wanted like the opening where it's like Bismuth lapis and Peridot as a part of the team, you get a shot of that where they're all right. Ride, they're riding in the car with them flying alongside. Like it's great. The the, yep. the intro just kind of nails like every little bit. Um, it does, and it's very, very snappy and quick, so it works very well as an intro. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say it is gonna have. It's gonna take me a while to get used to not hearing the the we whenever it comes on. Oh, you'll hear we. No, I know. It, it, does, it does. It does start off with we, yeah. which yeah. I think was a very nice way to tie it all together mm -hmm. to be like, okay, well, these, yeah, they're the same franchise, but. It just keeps it's up in just, a very different right. way. It's evolved. The Wii has evolved. Right. And mm. it's just, it's. I feel like it's going to be very, very different um, when the first episode of this does come on. I mean, I hope so, because if it's not very different, then it, it would just kind of seem like, well, why is she stressing so hard this is not just Steven Universe Season 6? You know what I, I mean? I hope, right. Not only did they let them, they didn't cancel the show, but they also like are giving them this weird episode. When this has never happened in Steve in, in, Cartoon, in Cartoon Network, Network no. never. The only yeah. the closest thing is Samurai Jack getting another season, but even that is not even really Cartoon yeah. Network anymore. Yeah, as Adult Swim, and I mean, if anything, that really shows that they do care about the show because I know a lot of people are like, oh, Cartoon Network doesn't care about Steven Universe, and it's like, no, it was the production well, schedule. They, I mean, you know. Companies can do bad things and good. Th like it, it doesn't have to be a black or white. Like you know, Cartoon, yeah. Cartoon Network hates it. Like they can do one thing and treat it fairly and well, and then you know they can next week come out with a promo where it's, it's, yeah. it's you I, know. I just really would want them to nail the the mood, the tone of the show, and the advertising. Right? Well, I mean, th there's certain ways to skew it comedically or like visually, and it, there, there's like a certain feel that needs to be nailed in these promotional commercials the first ones they were savvy enough to make comic-con be the first place they showed this off which yeah. i think was very and then smart. it became and then it got trending and again i mean there's confusion about is it season six or it, it, like there's confusing articles but honestly if you're just like a casual fan hearing that there's more steven universe it really it doesn't, it doesn't matter it doesn't yeah. matter you know all that all that matters is the news that there's going to be another steven universe all that thing. matters is that there's more on the way right and that's to most people i think that's all that matters right to yeah. people who are super into it i think it, the semantics matter like a lot more yeah and I well think... and i think news are news like news sources should really fix that i understand right. making the mistake at first but if that's your headline you need, you need to, to fix, fix that it. because it's just it's not, not right. Six, if you want to yeah. say there's more Steven Universe, that's a completely fair title to your article, but... Yeah, and I, I think that's why Rebecca started it with there is no season six yeah. because she wanted people... Well, she wanted a gut yeah. reaction, too. I think she yeah, wanted to troll in, in the nicest most like beautiful way. Like, you guys way. put me through this, all, right. all this pain. <laughs> Time to get a little revenge. <laughs> Rebecca Sugar making us cry one more time. Yeah, well, yeah. probably multiple because Zach did say this was the hardest he ever had to record for, so mm. that kind of concerns me a little bit. You mean not at the panel, some other time? Some said. other time. Yeah. He said it. Just to like be a, clear, because yes. he wasn't at the panel. No, no, Zach was not at the panel, no. but he did say that the upcoming stuff was some of the hardest he ever had to record. But again, that also ties into Rebecca making their character arcs very close to the person. The only other thing I have to say about the intro that we didn't mention is Spinel is there. 
Yes, she is there. Meaning it takes place post movie. Well, presume. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it has. To, she's sitting on Yellow Diamond's shoulder. It has. It takes yeah. place post movie. And um, Steven's wearing the black star shirt, so right. which is uh, young Greg's old shirt. Um, so will we see Sarah Style reprise the role? I, I definitely not. Don't expect that in every episode. I could. I could see it happening in one episode. Um, or just having silent appearances. But either way, considering what that movie was about, um, having Spinel just never be mentioned again, like this is some non-canon Pokemon movie or something, would feel like a little bit like, hmm. Especially since she is in the intro as well. Right. Like, so that'd be kind of weird if she was just in the I intro. I mean, I think the then... intro is a sign there. They're going to do... Right. They're going to at least acknowledge her existence. I don't think it's a sign right. they're going to do something with her, but she, she's there and it's like, you know, we didn't we didn't leave her in the garden again, guys. No. Don't worry. <laughs> she's still there. Mm -hmm. Until Yellow gets fed up with her. Don't even. <laughs> um, but I think that's about it that happened at that. I mean, they gave out pins at the end like they have for yeah. like the past three cons that they've been to. Mm -hmm. So they gave multiple chances to get the Spinel pins. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we breezed past it, but they, they did perform about four or five music numbers at the very beginning yeah. that were really nice. Um, I would say a pretty funny part was when uh, the crowd was supposed to help sing is isn't it love? Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't know the words. No, I feel like that's but all the other songs were like flawless yeah. and amazing, and it it just it, I don't know. I, I wish that they sung change, but also they couldn't have because Zach wasn't there. So I do understand mm. why they didn't perform it. But that personally, that's my favorite song from the whole movie. Um, but I don't know. Right. The rest of them were very nice, and it was very nice to see it performed live. And if anything, I think this just proves that it could be adapted into a musical. Absolutely. If they if oh, they definitely. wanted to, because even just watching them perform live was very very nice. Right, but that's the only thing live action in Steven Universe should come into contact. Oh yes, yes. Uh, please, absolutely. Please and thank please you. The only part of Let's the not get like a. Never mind. I'm not even throwing that out there. Mm. <laughs> not giving them the idea. Don't even no. start. Mm -mm. No. The light. <laughs> but no, the, the, the panel was worth the wait. If you ever get the chance to be at a Steven Universe panel, I, I would highly recommend it. Um, it is the energy a once in a lifetime room. experience. You're not going to get that same amount of like manic energy and yet like potent warmth from any other kind of crowd. Like it's just yeah, that's a, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, there was there was like absolutely not no drop of like cynicism or anything. I mean, yeah. trust me, I detect it. But <laughs> no, it was just such a warm like happy loving environment on the stage and the fans interaction like like you know even when a fan asked a question that wasn't like <laughs> the best question they they, they still were nice. they were very nice yeah. and every, very gracious. you know so the whole thing was just a great panel I would you say. could just say we really felt that true kind of love today <laughs> i had to oh my goodness i had to um, but yeah, Rebecca, like, if you ever do get the chance to see Rebecca or any of the cast, they, they do just foster a very loving, warm, and accepting environment. Like, mm -hmm. you walk into that panel room and you immediately felt the energy from everybody around you. And then as soon as they came on stage, it got even, like, more hyped up. Yeah. Um, yeah. especially when Rebecca came on stage, because, you know... It's just she's so casual. Too. I know I love, she is. She she had like she her, her, her beanie, beanie again, and, and she, was, like just jeans cute. and just kind of like yeah. a. She, she's had, just like, she hey. had like, well, she had a she had like a sweatshirt wrapped around her waist. Like she's she she could barely she, speak over the screaming. Yeah, like, hey, she's hey guys, she, hey guys, how, hey guys. How, how's it going? I can't. I'm her kidding. voice does not reach like her. It just it stops at a level. I don't. And think... I would never want her to be mad at me because she wouldn't yell. She would just be like. I'm very disappointed. I don't, disappointed. I don't think you did the best you could have done today. Oh, that would hurt so bad. <laughs> like, if Rebecca ever said that to me, I think I, my, I, my oh. heart would probably just stop. Like, You've made some decisions, and I don't think they were wise. <laughs> oh, gosh. We didn't point out that the, the, the panel was actually moved into the biggest auditorium right. in Comic-Con. It's the only... Cartoon Network had a, a, a different thing going on, like, they, the next they day. They originally which had it... 
put in an off-site venue, but they right. realized that right. it was going to be filled up to and the it was degree probably make a hassle. where they had to put it in the main stage just right. to make sure mm -hmm. as many people could get in. Yeah, because I believe The Walking Dead was originally in main stage, and they kicked The Walking Dead no, out. No, they had the, the Hobbit. Oh, The Hobbit. It was one. It was yeah. either or. I couldn't remember which one it was, but essentially it was in the Hulu theater first, yeah. and then they switched it to the biggest main stage. And it was packed. Yeah. And it was it was literally packed. Like you you couldn't have gotten in there. No way. Even if you tried, yeah. if you were late, like we were in line for like two and a half hours longer. Yeah. I, think. I think. I mean, we we were longer when new yeah. factor and getting into the building too. But but it was also the only Cartoon Network show to have a panel dedicated to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. You don't. You know. Yeah. None. None of the. I mean, We Bear Bears announced a movie not too long ago, and like, there's the only other, other stuff going on. Yeah. But... The only other presence they have is like a Halloween party they always have. I right. feel like they really wanted the focus on Steven Universe. Right. Yeah. To be fair, though, I don't. Got still that I DVD. Think, <laughs> I don't think oh yeah. They've had like I already a, a show it, so. focus panel yet. Like this is the first one for like here that Cards Network's done. So it's 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 an achievement. It is, I, and I think it, it just, it, it, it maybe, I'm not sure if this is like a good or a bad thing, but it really does set the bar a little bit higher for other shows at this point. Hopefully. I think it also sets the bar high for the epilogue. <laughs> I mean. Oh, that, that too. Like, cause it, you could be a total, it could be a total flop for all we know. Um, and then the show, I mean, I, I feel like it was, there was a lot that was unanswered that I feel should have been answered in my personal opinion. Um, so I would be kind of upset if a lot of it was still glossed over <laughs> even after the epilogue. Maybe that's why it's an epilogue. Maybe they made all the episodes and then we're like, oh god, this is awful. We better, uh, we better give people, like, a better stopping point. Uh, yeah, because this is, a, this is an epilogue. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, because in, in my opinion, I thought maybe the movie would be a stopping point, but it was kind of, it, it kind of would, but it was more like an add-on story. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it the, wasn't the, a stopping The movie point. contained, like, a lot of things you'd want to see in a Steven Universe finale, but it wasn't this all-encompassing ending. Right. I mean, Change Your Mind was, in a lot of ways... Um, but there was a lot that was not gone over. Yes, but I guess it's just the difficulty is that the stuff that wasn't gone over aren't necessarily... Like, they're not strictly stories in and of themselves. Right. Like, what, what the deal is with the Pink Pearl, like... You can't have a whole season based on that. I don't think no. so. Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what's coming next, and that's about all I gotta say. Same here. Yep. That's pretty much it. All right. Um, I will probably be making a more comprehensive... I'm not going to say breakdown because that's not normally my thing. But I'll make like a more comprehensive overview of the new opening and going over basically the difference between a season six and a, a sequel. Because I feel like even after this, people are still going to have their problems with that. Um, but let us know down in the comments down below how excited you are for the epilogue what your thoughts on it are if you wish there was a season six instead of an epilogue uh just let us know how you're feeling down in the comments and i'll see you guys in the next video have an amazing day everyone see you guys in the future because here we are <laughs>